Excuse me, Mikey Pipes, an Air Force nun. That's me. We're on our way to our first service call of the day. Customer has heating issues. Heating issues, and it's 14 degrees outside. Yeah. Get some warmth. From my recollection, it's a two-floor house. What do you want to jump out the door? It's a two. It's a two-story house. And half of the second floor does not heat up. I don't know if he has a boiler. I don't know if he has a furnace. I don't know squat. The only thing I know is that he's calling Mikey Pipes and we're gonna fix his problem. Ain't that right? Seems a little aggressive, but... Get with the program, Air Force Nine, or I'm gonna... Remember, you're on work release from the prison. <laughs> from Leavenworth. <laughs> And I will call your parole officer. I don't think they have those. <laughs> <laughs> you better behave yourself. I'll revoke your free room and board. You'll pay rent. <laughs> All right, guys. I would appreciate it if you smash that thumbs up button. I would appreciate it if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel. And I'd really, really appreciate it if you, for less than a cup of coffee per day, you can help us fight Navian. You tell Brian Cousin the lead counsel for Navy and over at K&L Gates to go see my videos. I was going to say something inappropriate, but I had to stop myself because I would get, I'll get a restraining letter. Yeah. I'll get an attorney letter. Also, Bosch wants you to keep it. Like, also, Bosch wants you to keep PG. PG, PG you want to keep PG-13, but I was going to tell him, like, listen, hey, BDK, just watch some of the soapy water videos. All right, let me stop ranting and raving. Let's get on with the program. Good morning, how are you? Here for the heat, yes? Yes. Tell me what's going on. Downstairs? Yeah. Okay. After you, sir. Okay, thank you. Are you Mike? Yes, I am. Yeah, you were highly recommended by my brother-in-law. Oh, okay. Who's that? Um, Hussein. Um, oh, he lives on East Carpenter Street. Yes. Yes. That's I have a yeah. stupid memory of things. It's oh, cool thing. that's good. <laughs> oh, you got an older water heater there. GE, they, it's, uh, they yeah. bring good things to life. Yeah, yeah, so it's, so time far, flies. Been, so far, it's been good, so I'm not gonna complain. Oh, and we've been here before too, I say. This old HB Smith, that's all. Anyway, two zone uh, boiler. Tell me, tell me what's going on. Yeah, your, your name is there. Yeah, so we've been here before. So I had. How long have you lived here? I found you <laughs> somehow. Oh. <laughs> and then, then he told me, "Oh no, he found a good guy." Like, I have to tell him. I didn't even see that. So, <laughs> anyway, um, it works great. Okay. And last and the end of last year, I noticed that this is the pipe that um, puts the heat to the upstairs. So it splits. You may notice that one. Yes. Goes that way, one Give goes a split that way. a split zone. Right. Uh, just right. one pump, and yeah. it's hot, nice and hot, going that way. Okay. But the other way is not. Towards my bedroom and you know so forth, which is great. Okay. Uh, I lived with it for. But a while. the living room, dining room, but kitchen here, isn't. It's still warm up to maybe like here. Okay. My, that's it. And we, I um, tried to um, bleed it and do whatever I can. I don't know. Okay. All right. Let me take a look and we'll switch spots. Let me see okay, what pressure is like and stuff in here and see what's going on. All right. So let's take a look at what we got. We have inch and a quarter coming up to one inch. This is a one inch main zone. Follow that. Here it splits three quarters to the left, three quarters to the right. The return is here. They're not pumping away, they're pumping back towards the boiler, which is this line, which goes right there. Follow it, it comes up from the slab, across to here and there. So the only way to purge out is to add a valve there, add a valve there, I close this valve, I purge this, I close that valve, I purge that. Or reverse direction of flow. Flip over the check valve, flip the circulator, 
and that would also work if this wasn't taking from the supply. All right, so isolation valve, the boiler feed is closed and we're draining down from there. Or from the return, what the, yeah, the return side, all right. We have this check valve here, this red thing, right? So its purpose in life is to let water travel only one direction. So if if it's not open, right? And this one doesn't really be cooperative. So I'm not gonna mess with it too much. But if we can open this, then any water that's above it will flow through. Make sense? But it's not cooperating. Hold on, gonna drop it. Yeah, probably. Not. All right, pop it there. The drain is down. First, you want. We're gonna cut this out as well. Let's get a uh, three quarter inch press coupling and a small piece of three quarter inch top. Right. So after I cut the pipe, I was getting this a ton of water coming out of here. So I could stick a piece of bread in here, but I need a little bit more time than that. I just took a piece of paper towel, shoved it in there, and now I can clean off the paint with the scratchy paper, the emery paper, the open mesh paint. We're also gonna cut this out and do the same thing there. All right, we're having a very big difficulty with the paint that's on here. So, we're gonna get it off. We have the torch. Yeah. Let me get up there with the scratchy paper. Working? Oh, yeah, the problem is, I'm just gonna give it away here. Let's see. Wrap this around. Yeah. Cooled off. You're still uh, taking that one little piece off. I know. Oh, man. I mean, Jesus Christ. Christ. It's like glue. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. The little spot right there. Yeah.
I think we might be good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. All right, three quarter press by drain coupling. We got rid of that stupid thing that was there. And over there, just a straight three quarter press ball valve. Now, that's open. If the lever is parallel with the pipe, it's open. If it's perpendicular, it's closed. In this case, it's closed to allow it to drain on this side. If you look at the arrows right there, that's open. That's closed, All right? You get the point. That's closed. Now it's open. Now, now we're gonna purge. Let's close that valve that we opened before. Let's fill water back into the boiler. Let's fast fill it. Let's watch our pressure increase. There's the fast fill lever on the Takeo half inch pressure reducing valve. If you notice the back flows in the wrong the wrong area. She needs to be before the before the cast iron <laughs> boiler pressure reducing valve. Look at that. See? Yeah, Alright, this is cast iron. So now you have cast iron and potable water supply. This is the backflow preventer. This goes there. This goes there. They're reversed. Let's put our check valve back to where it was. We hear it chattering away. Okay. Slow to fill. Then again, we have that one inch. And the 10, no, it's actually the same. It's taking a while for it to fill though. Still going. You can hear that noise. See? Manual fill. Probably wouldn't have been that bad idea to replace that too. Or we'll replace the whole boiler. H.B. Smith from Westfield, Massachusetts. Certified by the Dunkirk Radiator Company. It's old. Still is cast iron. I think still sitting at zero. Or is it raising up a little bit? Hmm. Wow. It's taking the pressure. Toma, 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 mommy. Look at that, burnt up to a crisp. Temperature and pressure, try to cater gauge. It's crazy. Oh, she's rising. Damn, it's like you have two inch mains in this house. <laughs> Damn. I think it was at 20 PSI before, wasn't it, Chris? Yeah, right around there. Yeah. All right, we're going to let this thing fill up. What's the moment 12. 12 PSI is typical. You know, especially since your extra, your expansion tank, your number 30 is pre-charged for 12 PSI. Yeah. So, yeah, taking a sweet time, but we'll fill it up and then purge. All right, that's open. That's closed. That's open. This is closed. Pop it open for a couple seconds. Get any air that's stuck here out. Monitoring the pressure as we go along. Here comes some air. Mm -hmm. From that. Sounds like Rice second. Krispies. <laughs> yeah. Want a Rice Krispie Street? Yeah, it does sound good right about now. And the reason why the water is so dark brown like that is because we have a. Look at that. We have a cast iron boiler. That sounds like Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> That's Peter Pan's favorite, by the way. Oh. Peter Pan goes to Taco Bell at least twice a day. That's insane. That is insane. I don't know how someone's... He's got an iron stomach. He does. Steel. No, but you know what's interesting? If he eats anything in the morning before lunch... Yeah, it destroys... He, he, you know, he destroys customers' bathrooms. <laughs> All right. What? Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's... Yeah. He's the other uh, apprentice. All right, close that valve. All right. And let's dump the, that bucket... Put the hose into the other bucket. Well, while we're maintaining pressure and watching the pressure gauge, 
dump that bucket. Our pressure. Uh, we have a kind of we have a pressure problem here. It's taking a long time for it to fill, and we don't have a Taj Mahal here. No offense to nothing, sir. You don't have a Taj Mahal. Taj Mahals take a long time to fill up. 12 PSI. I'm quite confident with that side. So now we're going to open up that side. We're going to close this one. Open up the blue handle. Hold the hose. Hold the hose. Pressure went to around 20. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing there. Fully open that blue handle. That's the purge station. All right. Get some air out of there. Yep. You know, that whole zone was basically drained. You have baseboard or convectors on the first on the top floor? Baseboard. Okay. Very good. Convectors we may have to we would have to bleed. Especially with a monoflow system. Mm, it's nice and warm. Nice and warm. Let's make sure we get all those pockets of yep. air out. Give it a fresh oxygenated water. Ooh, look at that. Bubbles. That's after Taco Bell and White Castle. <laughs> Ain't that right, Chris? Deadly combination. Yeah. Not, not Chipotle, right? No, Chipotle is good for the soul. Is it good for the soul? Yeah. All right. Let's switch, switch buckets. We just still gotta purge out some more. It's a, it's a height. It's a vertically challenged bucket right there, by the way. That's definitely a vertically challenged bucket. That is not your typical five-gallon bucket. Sounds like me. <laughs> you are vertically challenged. That's a four-gallon? Huh? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. It is definitely vertically challenged. Yeah, I'll call it a midget, but I don't want to get canceled. Three and a half. Three and a half? Yeah. Three and a half. Right. All right. So we'll finish that one, and then we should be good to go. Chipotle told me. Chipotle told you? Yeah. So you got some bubbles there. No. I'm not feeling anything now. Anyway, I, don't feel, I don't feel nothing now. We gotta do something with that. Well, he wants to replace the boiler anyway, but I would do a new pressure reducing valve. Oh, hold on. Feeling something. Yeah. Oh. What you do is close that valve. Let's build up the pressure again. Right? Because pressure is an issue here. So by closing that valve, we're going to let the pressure reducing valve catch up and put back, you know, some pressure back into the system. And then more pressure, we can get the more bubbles out. But also, let in, letting in more bubbles at the same time. Go figure. It's taking a sweet time. Sweet, sweet time. Oh, we got a little drip there. The packing nut. There you go. Get a little extra on it. 15 PSI. Let that build. I'm building up the pressure. So do it again. What are we at? Uh, roughly coming up to 20 yeah, now. let's get that to 30. And then crack that open and watch what comes out. Sometimes you gotta really get up to that, close to that 30 PSI mm -hmm. mark in order to get all that air out. Keep in mind, the pressure reducing valve is normally set for 12 PSI, which matches the extra number 30. See? And one of the things that we probably would have also replaced is this, but he's inclined to replace the boiler. So, again, we get all the air out, we're good. There's no other air separation removal on this boiler other than than that. <laughs> that, ain't, not... that, ain't doing, that ain't doing diddly anymore. <laughs> all right, open it up. Uh, that lever on the pressure reducing valve, turn it all the way towards the boiler. You push down on it, it'll go. Mm -hmm. Come on, you can do it. Well, you got your soft oh. Kelvin hands. Okay, there you go. That's it, yeah. That's it. Push down on them. All right. Now close that. All so, right. Very good. Open this back up. Open this up. And we opened up that. And now we're going to turn the boiler on. There's an electronic ignition module ticking away. And we have ignition. And I almost get... You want to grab the test, though? I'm just curious. I think, I think that we show them the results. 
I don't even want to replace his boiler, but I think he'll he'll just force feed me money. He'll like jam it down my throat so fast, like Mike, take my money. So let's get the test over, because I'm because how I hear how I hear the flame. Put it this way, if if the boiler is safe, I'm gonna take fifty dollars off your bill. Okay. If it's not safe. I can smell it. Come here, smell this. You smell this? You can't smell carbon monoxide, but I could smell Something. that that soot. You know that that temperature. There's a reason why the pressure. There's a reason why that's like. How good is your sense of smell, ladies and gentlemen? Do you smell what I smell? H. B. Smith. And there's a reason why that pressure and temperature triticator gauge is melted like that. I can smell the carbon coming from this boiler. And we're gonna do a combustion analysis. And if I am wrong and the boiler is safe, you know, I'll give you a hundred bucks off the bill. Not forget about 50, I was gonna do 50, but I am more confident that, mm, I'm really weighing, I'm really weighing the fact. How about this? If the, if I am wrong, right? This is a win-win for you. If I am wrong, I am going to take $100 off the bill. Okay. If I am correct, I will allow you to take today's entire bill and apply it towards a new boiler. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Bombus. Oh. Oh. Kind of. Bombus. Okay. Let's see. We have our HIK Micro B20. Thank you, HIK Micro, for sending this to us. And we have some heat. You can actually hear it. Smell it and smell it. So the living room and dining room and the kitchen were problem areas before, right? Yeah. Any anywhere else? No. But it's, it's just this, just this, just this little loop. This loop right. Okay. And you can see the heat loss in the corner there, by the way. Yeah. yeah. There is a whole. Wow, thing. that is it's cold. 40, 35 degrees at the coldest point. Yeah, it's there's a huge difference in the floor. Look at 24 degrees by this door. Wow. It's crazy. It's, a, it's an Anderson door, all right? Hey, nothing wrong with Anderson's. <laughs> it's cold outside. <laughs> and that's why he's got the heater. Yeah. Wow. All right. Okay. But the crazy how heat loss here just in that corner too yeah the they couple of holes in this it's probably be a poor know, insulation the, just right here yeah all right no radium flooring huh well, when you had no heat, <laughs> it was a yeah <laughs> now let's see back downstairs this one here by the foyer okay We're heating up at a max of 97 100 degrees already that's very nice now, oh Eh, I'll leave the shoes off. It's good. The floor is dry and clean in the boiler room. The bombas. All right. The Testo 320 is back to life. We really, I really have to bring this thing in when it's that cold outside. 14 degrees. I'm really, I'm playing with fire, especially since I can't buy a new one. They don't make them anymore. <laughs> It's gonna zero out. And let's get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. Am I gonna take $100 off his bill or is he giving me a, the, the boiler job? There you go. What do you think, Chris? Air Force none? Uh, how bad was the inside of the... I could smell the, com yeah. the, the carbon when the I'm, boiler turned I'm, on. I'm thinking it's gonna be a new, new boiler. A new boiler? Yeah. I have the benefit of the doubt and I'm a gambling man. I have to agree with you, though, <laughs> on this one. <laughs> and Mr. Klein, Mr. Homeowner, what do you think? Do you think I'm taking $100 off the bill? Or... The whole thing. The whole thing? All right. So, Chris, do the honors. Hold that right there. We have it charging. We have... Oh, this is dry. We're going to get a new filter in for him. All right. There's not any trick filters where it just gives you a, a false positive, like taking a COVID test. All right. Let's go, Brandon. Okay. Oh. Are you guys forced to wear masks? No. Only if the customer asks. And it depends on my mood. Okay. It really does. It really depends on my mood. Still love that one story. Which one? The um, 
homeowner comes out and says, hey, can you wear a mask? And you said, I say, I'd rather not. And they said, that's going to be a problem. And he said, no, it's not. And he drove away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go to, this, I go to a service call about a month ago. Oh, I gotta put the thing on. About a month ago, and it's an outside piping job, oh. right? And I already have carbon monoxide. Like a, a frozen pipe burst outside. Yeah, we had a deep. Remember, we had a deep, deep freeze a few weeks about a month ago. And a homeowner, you know, I pull up to the house. The homeowner's already like runs outside wearing a mask and says that, hey, um, uh, is there, you know, is there a problem? You know, can you wear a mask? Outside. And uh, outside, and I'm like. Hold on, but the, am I fixing the pipe outside or inside? He goes, outside. I was like, why would I wear a mask outside? And he goes, was it going to be a problem? And I was like, not going to be a problem. Have a nice day. Call somebody else. <laughs> it's like that. Are you kidding me? Like, we're outside? Yeah, yeah, outside. I mean, uh, I mean we're critical too, but still outside. I don't, tr I don't trust this noise here. It's made. But we're going to stick this probe in the hole and put it right there. See, my O2 is not even coming down. It's too cold. See? My stack temperature is reading, but I'm not getting any reading on the O2. Yeah. It's just too cold. And you're still at one part per million. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about that one. Like, it's literally just that cold. Oh! Yeah? We're getting some, getting some changes there. Hold on. I keep moving. I can't read it. There we go. The people want to see what they want to see. I know. All right, so let's, let's look at some number, numbers here. And sir, homeowner, you can watch as well. The first number, that's your stack temperature. And that is the temperature of the exhaust going up your chimney. Normally for a gas boiler, um, we see between, for, you know, for an 80%, what we consider an 80% efficient boiler, we see between 375 and as high as maybe like 450, maybe even 475. You're closer to 560 plus degrees right now, and it's climbing. Uh, the next number is oxygen, which is O2. That number is okay. It's within range. After that is particles, million, particles per million of carbon monoxide. And we were at like 60, and now we're at 48 and dropping. And the other one is carbon monoxide available free air, which is at 58 and also dropping. The gross efficiency is 78%. And... CO2 is 8.07. Back to there. So, let's put that right there, maybe. Or right there. Okay. I want to see this, this thing. But as far as... I'm not going to bullshit you. No, 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 right? I keep it real. No, I was expecting the carbon monoxide to be astronomical. Oh, okay. Astronomical. Based on this However, your stack temperature being almost 650 degrees warrants the boiler in need of replacements. Mm -hmm. It's not an emergency because it's been like this for God knows how long, but you should you should do it. Because the sooner you do it, the less 650 degrees of temperature is going up your chimney and more into the house. So again, I don't know what your gas bill is, but based on what I'm seeing here, a realistic expectation of half savings per month for your heating side of the of the gas component is realistic. It's not a fake number because if I if I replace this boiler like for your for your brother's house, and I can show you his, his combustion result readings when you're like under 400 degrees and you're at 650, that is that's a huge huge number. And think about it now. There's something else we could do by the way. Where is all? Why isn't the boiler absorbing this temperature? Right. Right. Let's think about that. And if I look inside the, the draft hood or if I take this apart, you'll see carbon buildup, oh. a little bit of it. And it's interfering with heat transfer from flame to heat to the cast iron, which then gets absorbed, it absorbs that heat, which transfers to the water, which then circulates throughout the system. So, so it, you know, if, if the boiler was, let's say, fairly new, I would be inclined to, hey, listen, we're not replacing your boiler. We're going to take it apart, we're going to scrub it, we're going to put it all back together, and you'll be good. Right. And we'll address the reason why this occurred. It has to be, there's a reason why, and it could be dirty burners, could be a multiple plethora of things, but it's generally a gas pressure issue, a, you know, gas adjustment on the gas valve, or dirt. Yeah. Interfering with proper draft of air going from 
cold to hot. You know, but what we don't see behind the picture is cold air is going up, traveling across the floor, going up the inside of the boiler, up here, and then up the chimney. So yeah, we try to. So now, if we look back at these numbers now, your stack temperature is 658 degrees. Oxygen is six percent. Carbon dioxide is at 53, with 74 available for air. And we'll clipboard that. And next we'll test is draft. Put in a zero out. When it's zeroing out, the probe does cannot be in there. It turned off. <laughs> Is that temperature? Was this was the triticator gauge say? Yeah, I see. A little. It was probably around thirty-five. Yeah. All right, we're good. Let's get the printer. We'll print this. No, where is that? Oh. I have a printer. Yeah. Right. I put a. I get these shipping label packages from Uline. This is the four by seven package. I don't know. It's like thirty cents each. And I put my combustion test results in here. And every year when we come back, we put more in there. And it pays to have the right tools for the job. You know, when I, when I, years ago, when I, I, I about a year after I, I started the business, I, um, I wanted to get a combustion analyzer. Again, they were expensive back then. We're talking about 15 years ago. Very expensive. And the company I actually left, I was a partner of, you know, me and me and my the, the, my other partner had a disagreement of things about you know growing the business. This is when the internet first started becoming of things. People were googling things. Less people were using yellow, yellow pages. And I was trying to tell my partner, like, listen, you know, like the phone isn't ringing anymore. We're in the middle of the housing recession, right? People aren't spending the money. People aren't opening the yellow pages anymore. They want, you know, they're going on, inter on the internet, and we need a website. We need a web presence, and he wanted nothing to do with it. It was going to cost like a hundred grand at the time, because we were a fairly large company, right, with several trucks, and he just didn't want to spend the money. And I said, listen, I'll even will, I'm willing to help, you know, we'll figure something out, right? Take it out of my end as well. He wanted not want to do it, that's why I left. But anyway, about a year after I started my own business, I wanted, wanted, I wanted to get one of these because at my last company, this is what we used during heating service calls. Not every single one, because it's expensive and to, to, to re, um, I guess, recalibrate it on an annual basis was expensive. So I bought one. Right? It was like 3000 bucks, And the first boiler I used it on, paid for it. There you go. Paid for it. It's, it's crazy. So, like, and I, I, my, 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 my feeling is, and I say this all the time, if you're not testing, right, like no one ever drilled a hole on this flue pipe in the life of the boiler, right. ever. Right. No one's ever tested, ever. No. The only companies that sometimes you'll see holes in flue pipes are oil companies. Because you kind of like have to. The only way to properly do like a tuning vac is to by doing combustion analysis, right. look at, do a smoke test, and you know, and see. But with gas, people think like the majority of people think, oh, it's clean, it's, it's clean it's maintenance free. Yeah, it's, that's not true. If you open the manual, it does say you need annual maintenance. Yeah, but all right, we tested that. This is hot. And did we check the other side of the bedrooms? You want to check the other side? Make sure they're good. All right. What do you think, Air Force None? Pretty solid. Pretty solid. So make sure we, we have add this to the list. This has to get done today. We are not going home today without replenishing this truck stock. Whatever we used yesterday and whatever we used today, because I don't have any more of those in the truck, and I don't have any more of those in the truck. All right. And yesterday we broke the ram set. Yeah. All right. We have to make some pit stops on the way home. Okay. And by the way, the, the Brooklyn Nets won last night, even though we left before halftime. Yeah. But we had unlimited food. We ate like pigs. They're for cheerleaders. <laughs> they're for the cheerleaders? Yeah, yeah they're kind of not, right. they're yeah, not. They're not like any Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Exactly. They're far from that. Yeah. All right. Nicey nice. 8, 20 in the morning. We've been here since 7. All right. So we finished up that service call. And we're heading off to our next. The answer to the question is we kind of met in the middle. I didn't give him $100 off and he didn't. You know, concede to replacing the boiler, a commitment to replace the boiler today, but he did say he's going to replace it in the spring. All right, and at which point I'll give him a deal. I'll give him a deal. And it's only because I was expecting to see the carbon monoxide levels to be through the roof. But instead, I saw a stack temperature through the roof. Like, damn, that's 670 degrees stack temperature. That is like hot as AF. 
You know, I have to keep it rated PG for Bosch. Hot AF. Urban Dictionary, if you don't know what that means. All right, let me show you real quick how I enter this into my, um, my electronic invoice, our mobile dispatching and invoicing and payment uh, program that we use is called ServicePal. I've been using them since, I've been using them since 2012. And for the longest time, I was customer number two. Customer number number one is no longer with them. So now I am number one. Numero uno. Numero uno. All right. On the top of my invoice, we have our logo. We have our license information, our address. We have a complaint, a request, the heating issue, and my diagnosis. Second floor is split zone. Leaves two pipes, both three quarter. Returns from slab in one inch. We cut two three quarter inch valves in. Purge tested okay. Perform combustion and draft analysis. Stack temperature over 650 degrees. Discussed boiler replacement. Below that, I have my hourly labor rate and the two parts that I use, and it also calculates time. Once I type all that in, I use uh, the additional pages on this electronic invoice to take pictures of the combustion analysis, pictures of the boiler, pictures of the parts that we put in or, and or took out, and also I could swipe the customer's credit card right from the app, and within 24 hours, the money is deposited into my account the next day. And on average, I pay below industry standard, Forget about paying 2.75%, forget about paying 3.25%. All right, I pay under 2%. And again, that's entirely based on my relationship with ServicePal and Global Edge. They're the merchant provider for ServicePal. Check them out. There's a link down in the description box down below. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something, you learned something from it. You know, in the majority of the Northeast, we have, you know, boilers, we have hydronic and we have steam systems. Where elsewhere in the United States, they have forced air systems, they have the furnaces, they have the heat pumps. So we're kind of unique where 95% of the service calls that we go to have a boiler. And I wish we had more furnaces because there's a lot of furnaces out there in the, in the US and, you know, my community is not just in the tri-state metropolitan area the northeast part of the united states it's global it's a global reach it is don't give me that funny look chris boy back and you're like a red-headed stepchild don't you know who's your daddy who's your daddy i don't know you, you keep you keep uh, suggesting that i should have turned out black so. <laughs> really I, I think you you want to think that it's not you but i know sure it, is. it is it is i know it is what it is. But I could have been more prouder. Anyway. Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. Hopefully this was an educational video. Hopefully I gave you some entertainment at the same time. And if I did one of those two things, I'd really appreciate it. And I thank you in advance for hitting that thumbs up button. Sharing is caring. Make sure you share with others. Share with your neighbors, your friends, your loved ones, your, your, your girlfriends your mistresses, share with everyone. Share the love of Mikey Pipes. My reach is long, it's global. And if you want any stickers, email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. Details in the description box down below. We also have a plenty of merchandise and, and swag for sale. You can either pick them up directly from me and cut out the middleman, or you can buy directly from me, Mikey Pipes. Sharing is caring. I love you. You love me. We're one big happy family. Just like Barney. Just like Barney. I'm going to get copyright strikes for that one. Go! Go! Be well. God bless. Stay safe.